In the previous session, we looked at some of the types of analysis that could be performed in SOLIDWORKS, such as static dynamic, linear nonlinear analysis, and much more. In this session, we will be introducing you to the SOLIDWORKS 2019 simulation environment. The video is made with the assumption that you are already familiar with 3D modeling suite in SOLIDWORKS. So without further ado, let's just get started. So as you can see right now, I have opened my screen into the SOLIDWORKS environment. So if you are not sure how this comes, all you need to do is double click on the SOLIDWORKS icon that you will have on your desktop once you install the software. Or if you don't have the icon on your desktop, you can just go to the search bar and type SOLIDWORKS just like this. So I got this by pressing the Windows key here. So you can now type in SOLIDWORKS just as I did here. Click on this one and you will get this interface. Once the software has loaded, you will either be met with a welcome tab or a plain screen. So since we don't have anything on our interface right now, I'll just go ahead and press on Control plus N. And this gives us the new SOLIDWORKS document dialog box. So from here, you can either select part, assembly or drawing based on your requirement. Since we will be working on a part model, I'll just click on part. And I'm not pressing OK because there's something else I need to show you. Let me just press cancel. For now, what I'm going to do is I've already created a model just for the sake of this video. So I'll just directly open into it. So I'll press Control plus O. Now I'll just navigate to the model. And press open. This will open the handle solid part that I've already made. So we have it. Let me just maximize this one. As you can see, I have activated the view for the front plane, top plane, right plane, and also the origin. On top of that, I've also defined the material for this handle. So let's have a quick recap of the commands that we have in 3D modeling module in SOLIDWORKS. Most of you should be aware of the options available, but there is no harm in having a small recap. The first and most important thing in any 3D modeling software is to have consistency in the units that we use. So to select the type of units we'll be using, we can go to the unit system dropdown box in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and click on this. Here we will get the different types of unit systems that are available. For example, the first one is MKS, meters, kilogram, second, CGS, centimeter, gram, second, or MMGS, millimeter, gram, second, and the IPS, which means inch, pound, and second. Or if you want to customize the unit system, you can just go to edit document units and customize it from there. The next important thing, the planes and the origin. There are three different planes in which we can do our 3D modeling in SOLIDWORKS. They are the X, Y, Y, Z, and Z, X. These planes are also known as the front plane, top plane, and the right plane respectively. By default, they're actually hidden. But right now in this model, what I've done is I've just activated the view for them. To do this, you, you just need to select on the plane, right click, and press on the I icon. So if you want to hide it, press on the hide option and that the plane will be hidden. And if you want to view the plane, you just need to right click and click on show. Here you can also select the type of material you want your model to have by right clicking on the material option in the design tree. In the entirety of the course, we will be primarily discussing only three modules in this offer. They are the features, sketch and the simulations. As you can see, the simulations module is not visible. That's because we need to activate the license. So to do that, we need to go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins and press on SOLIDWORKS simulations. So once we press it, what happens is the software will cross verify with the licensing server to check whether we have the SOLIDWORKS simulation package with us. So if you have not purchased the SOLIDWORKS simulation package, this option will not be available. So since we have it, uh, you can see that this extra module has appeared. So to access it, you just need to click on it. 
So before moving on to simulation, let's just discuss about the rest of the modules. What's the difference between all three of these modules? Uh, we'll first talk about the sketch module. Let's go ahead and click the sketch module. The sketch module is used to draw 2D diagrams of the objects, which we use as a basis to model our 3D objects. In the sketch module, we have many options to generate 2D shapes like the circle option, the rectangle option, the polygon option, the line option, and many more. The next module is the features module. Here, we can create 3D models based on our 2D inputs. Here we have options like extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, extruded cut, revolve cut, fillet and many more. I've already created the 3D model just as I said. So this is just a 3D model of a handle which we use to pull or close our doors. So what we will be doing is we'll just be trying to simulate the action of someone pulling the handle of the door. So to do this, let's just head over to our simulation environment. I'll just click on the simulation option and I'll press on new study. This will change the user interface on the left side of the screen. Here, the property manager will replace the design tree. It will also ask you what type of simulation you would like to perform on the model. Let's go ahead and press on static. Uh, let's name it as handle static and let's go ahead and click on the OK option. Once we press the tick button, it will open the design tree. Since we have not assigned a material to our model, we will go ahead and do that now. Let's right click on the name of our model in the design tree. Since I have named it as handle, that will be the name here too. Right clicking on it, we will get a drop down box with many options. Two specific options are of importance for us. They are the apply or edit material option and the apply favorite material. The favorite material option allows us to select common materials such as plain carbon steel, cast alloy steel, brass, copper, nickel, rubber, etc. If the metal or material you are looking for is not present in the favorite materials option, you can go ahead and click on the apply or edit materials option. This will open the materials dialog box for us. Here we can select a wide range of metals and non-metals. All these materials have a predefined set of values derived from actual materials. And if you want to enter custom values for your metal or non-metal, you can do that by inputting your values in the custom plastics under the custom materials option. Here you can input values such as elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, shear modulus, yield strength, and much more. Once we have selected the required material, we just need to press on apply and the selected material will be applied to our model here. I personally want to apply brass as the material for our handle. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just close this dialog box right now. I'll just right click on the handle option, apply favorite material and click on brass. And brass has been applied. So as you can see here next to the name of our model, you will have the name of the material that we have applied. Once we have defined the material, we can move to connections. Let's right click on the connections in the design tree. This will give us a dialog box. We can also add connections from the connections advisor option, which is available in the taskbar. Let's click on the small arrow here. From here, you can choose different types of connections that you would like to give to your model. Since this is a simple 3D model with no points for connections, none of the options are applicable to us here. Similar to connections, you can either click on the fixtures option in the design tree or you can click on the small arrow below the fixtures advisor in the taskbar. So from this drop down, let's click on fix geometry. If you have noticed these handles on doors, 
you would have observed that these handles are actually held into place on a door by help of screw sockets. So we will need to portray the same action here also. So what we will be doing is I'll be selecting these circles as fixed positions because this is where we will be having our screw open. So since we have four holes, we will be selecting it four times. Let me just go ahead and do that right now. And it is important that you don't select the circle, you select the cylinder. Here, since ours is a fixed joint, we have selected the fixed geometry option. Similarly, if the model, whichever you are simulating has a roller or slider or even a fixed hinge, you can select the appropriate option here. So let's click on OK. Uh, our next course of action would be to give external loads for the geometry. For that, we can either right click on the external loads option here or select the small arrow here from the external loads advisor option in the taskbar. So I'll just click on this one and I'll select force. So this will prompt us to mention where our handlebar will be experiencing force. As any common person would know, we will always pull our handle from the long cylinder here. But here you can notice that all the arrow marks in the depiction act inwards into the handle. But this is not how force acts on a handle. To avoid this, we can select the direction in which we want our force to be acting. So to do this, we need to select the select direction radio button. This will add a few more additional options in the property manager. To define the direction of force, select the pink rectangle. This allows us to determine the direction of force. Since we want our force to be perpendicular to the front plane, we will be selecting that. So I'll just scroll, go over to the front plane and select the front plane. Our next course of action would be to decide the direction of force with respect to the selected front plane. To do that, we need to go to the force option in the property manager. Here we will be having three options. The first one is force along the plane direction one, force along the plane direction two and force normal to the plane. Since the third option is our required, we will be selecting that. As you can see, once we actually selected the third option, the direction of the arrows has changed to our required. Now let's input the value of force we would like to act on our model. Let's add a force value of around say 500 Newtons. Now let's press on the green tick icon. Now we have successfully added the force and also we have fixed our model. So our next course of action would be to mesh the model. To do that, we can go to the mesh option in the design tree. Here, right click on mesh and press on create mesh. Here you can set the mesh density by sliding the slider along the direction. So if we move it towards the right, we'll get a finer mesh and towards the left, we'll get a much coarser mesh. You can also set the mesh parameters by clicking on the mesh parameter option. Here, since this is actually a very simple simulation, we don't really need to change many any options here. So we'll just make it a, a five millimeter mesh. You can do that by changing it here. Uh, this option is to define the global size of the mesh and this option is to define the tolerance of the mesh. If you have many curvature based elements, you can select a curvature based mesh. Let's click on OK. Now the solver will be meshing our model. Here you can see that our model has been meshed. So all that is left for us is to run the study. Before I press on the run the study option, there is another thing which you need to know. Here in the mesh options, if you feel that your model is very simple and you don't really need to dab around with 
the mesh options you can just select the mesh and run option so once you press this option the solver will automatically mesh the model and run the simulation so let's do that we'll just click on the run the study option to run our simulation okay so the simulation has completed and we have our results here you can notice that the model has deformed a lot if you think about it we didn't add a lot of force to it either it was just 500 newtons of it if the model was made of say a weak plastic material the deformation can be justified but our model was made of brass which is a metal so what do you think went wrong to get our answer let's look at the top left corner of our workspace here you can see that the scale of deformation is around 626 times since the amount of force that we had input is less the deflection and the change in the stress strain are also very less so to make the results much more readable to the end user the deformations are increased so to get the original deformation scale just double click on the box here this will create a new stress plot option here here you can just go to the true scale radio button and press on ok so once you press that you can notice that the deformation scale has been reduced to one and your model has also changed here we can see that almost no deformation even takes place and in the right side we have our contour legend so this is a one misses stress legend well that's it for the video guys if you feel that i've left out a lot of parts don't worry this is just a introduction video which is to set you in pace with the simulation environment here in this video we've just performed a simple static analysis with a very small force now following videos we will be taking a much more in-depth dive into the different types of fea simulations that we can perform in solidworks i'll meet you in the next one bye